last from the coast. There's no more room in hell. The dead will walk here. They're coming to get you, Barbara. The boogeyman is real, and you found him. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Have you checked the children? children, children, children. Welcome, everybody, to episode 28 of They Cast from the Coast, the Horse Center podcast with an East Coast flair. My name is Adam Miles, and I have with me, as always, Sergeant Tim Johnson, NYPD. That's much see, better than the last yeah, one. Yeah, see, and see, the thing is, it's like, I like it because people don't necessarily, like, it's, yeah, Tim's, Tim's part of the NYPD. Like, you know what I mean? But you mean Kabuki Man! Kabuki Man and Sergeant Kabuki Man. Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD. How you doing, Tim? I'm good, I'm good. No complaints over here. Over up in ya. No. No complaints. Good. Nope. More busy week. More busy time. More, 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 more busy, busy, busy. Um same thing, editing. Um I love doing photography. I love it. It's so much fun. Yeah. Um, you got a couple of big shoots coming up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. And I can't wait to share that with everybody. Um, yeah, just working on a lot of really cool stuff. Um, you know, our secret projects, <laughs> which is a lot of fun. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, secret projects. Oh, we got it. And everybody else will know soon enough. But yes, yes. Um, we'll just keep you which guys I, on the hook. Again, I can't wait to share. Um, I've been uh, I've been um, doing some writing on some secret stuff. Um, and it, it's, it's real nice. Real <laughs> it's, nice. It's real nice. Um, really, really. Nice. I don't know. It's just it's it's a lot of fun to be. I thought that it, it would be annoying, being stretched in all these different directions, working on all these different creative outlets. But it's not. It's 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 euphoric. <laughs> it's mm. it's it, you get a certain you know creative high from working on all this stuff, and I'm not getting tired of any of it because I'm constantly switching. You know what I mean? So. Keeping it real. I mean, it might, it, it, it might, yeah, I guess, <laughs> but it might take a little bit longer for projects to come out because I'm working on a little bit and a little bit and then a little bit, mm-hmm. but I think the overall end result, like there might be a week where it's all done and then Tim just posts, holy shit, this is like a month's worth of shit, like all at once. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's like Christmas. It's like Christmas yeah. for us. For the people yeah. who enjoy it, it's like Christmas. Yeah. But uh, I, like I said, I'm I'm really excited. Uh, 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 I'm really excited to get started on some of these these secret projects. Um, yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about the, the 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 big secret project. Oh, the big one. The big one. The big one, everybody. The big the one. Big I can't. One. I can't wait to announce it. <clears throat> I can't wait to. I just can't wait to just start doing it and. Yeah, I'm 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 really excited, really excited. <laughs> I know right. so, I know Dave Dave is really excited, but oh, I still yeah. I still feel Adams on the fence about the whole thing. I'm not on the fence about it. I'm not on the fence. About yeah, it. every time every time like me and Dave talk about it, we get right giddy and like our eyes light up and stuff. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, 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 that that could work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah man. exactly. We'll that sounds we'll good. We'll see how it goes. We'll see, see how it goes. Yeah, it's like, what do you mean? Like, we're doing this. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll be all right. Me and me and Dave are like, oh my god, and we could do this, and we could do that. Yeah, a bunch yeah, of giggly yeah. schoolgirls. And Adam's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry, yeah. we're just gonna tell Adam. Uh, we'll try to remember you in the credits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Trust me, they'll remember my performance. Oh, oh, oh. we will see if you can perform. <laughs> oh, I have, you know what? I have no doubt that Adam will be absolutely fantastic in this. None whatsoever. No sarcasm, no backhanded comments. Adam, you will kill this, man. It'll be amazing. It was a role meant for Adam. It kind of was. It kind of was because I literally wrote it with. <laughs> with it's me. you. Nice. Very cool. I uh, think there's going to be there'll there'll even be a line where you say that's exactly. That's exactly Tim. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, perfect. Shut up, Dave. <laughs> okay. Well, let's move on down the table for a minute, Dave. How you doing? My headphones, miles. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Yeah, glad to be here tonight. Ooh, always continuing on with the trauma month. Mm. Trauma month. Trauma. Trauma. Trauma month. Exactly. Very exciting times. I mean, I'm still I'm still on a high over that whole Lloyd Lloyd Kaufman episode. I mean, mm. we had Lloyd Kaufman on our show. He's such a great guy. Oh yeah, it was fantastic. We're, it was we're... amazing. Oh man, I just yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like it's like that super high man. We got to catch that again. We'll we'll get another actor or actress on the show and and hopefully uh, hopefully we get that same euphoric. Well, mm-hmm. what is it you called it, Tim? Like the the, the, the cl- euphoric cloud of awesomeness. The uh, euphoric cloud of awesomeness, and hopefully hopefully nice. we ride that. You know, catch the tra- catch the dragon's tail, as they say. <laughs> the best yep. part of the best part about all of that though was how how down to earth he was and how he spoke to us with with the same level of respect like he called us all by our first names and yeah. he was very gracious with his answers he yeah. wasn't like it, it just it, it felt like we knew him you know what i mean and yeah. um yeah that's that it was it was amazing it was amazing props off to that guy that's for sure that's for yep. sure and w- and once again the theme of this month being the troll month and in support mm-hmm. of trauma please everybody and we'll state this every time do not forget to support truly independent cinema. Troma has Troma now. They have the YouTube channel with all their freebies, all kinds of stuff that you can subscribe to and follow them on. But support the independent, the truly independent Troma. Get out there and spread the word. I mean, there's nothing better than what these guys are trying to do. And it isn't just the movies that they make; it's the movies that they curate as well. They have put through quite a few actors, actresses, directors through the whole trauma universe and that have come out the other side, you know, with big careers. Once again, like James Gunn and Trent Haga and all these guys. So it's, it's, it's just yep. incredible stuff. So absolutely keep, keep going in that direction. Yeah. Wow. It's uh it's so you're going to tell us week. what you did, Dave. Adam just totally cut you off. Well, you, you t- saw that, cut, right? I, I did that. see that. And I was going to see how far he went. <laughs> And yeah. he was absolutely <laughs> ready to introduce the episode. I, I wasn't. I, or, or he was going to get done, into man. what he was doing this week. He was done. Dave, like, Dave, he was done with me. this is your time, bud. This is your time. Go ahead. All right, fine. Go ahead, Dave. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Bugger. Um, you know, like last episode, just uh, been playing Friday the 13th. Uh, the game, it's fantastic. Um, oh, it, it, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! I'll Leave get there. Oh, Tim! <laughs> no, uh, but I, I I mentioned Friday the Thirteenth, the game, uh, mm-hmm. for the simple mm-hmm. fact that uh, tonight or today, um, I noticed that there's a, a recent article floating around the internet that talks about the upcoming single player mode that we're going to mm-hmm. see in Friday the Thirteenth, the game. Mm-hmm. And the single player mode is actually going to take place, according to the article, mm-hmm. before the events of the multiplayer. So, of course, the multiplayer kicks off. Jason kills one of the counselors, and everybody scatters. Everybody scatters, and you spawn in whatever location you've scattered to, and then it goes from there. Mm-hmm. But the single player version of the game apparently 
is going to be the lead up to that scenario. So I'm interested to see how they're going to pull that off, what it's uh, what it's going to entail. But uh, yeah, interesting. We yeah. know it's coming, so and more Thanks. maps. Yeah. And more maps. The thing yep. that I, I, because me and Adam discussed this on uh, uh, before we started recording. Oh, I wasn't involved in the discussion. No, you were getting coffee. Oh, okay. Let me drink my coffee. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the thing, the thing that I'm curious about is, are you going to have the option in the single player? Are you just going to be one of the counselors? Or are you going to have that option to be Jason as well and go through? Because I heard that each single player level, so to speak, is going to be one of the films. So if you're doing part two, right, Mm -hmm. are you going to be the counselors through the whole experience of part two? Or are you going to have the option to go through part two as Sackhead Jason? You know what I mean? Like, I want to know these things. Yeah. Inquiring, yeah. inquiring minds want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Well, it'll be interesting how they kind of tail it in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The single player to the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. So definitely, definitely interesting. Anyway, but yeah, no, that's that was definitely something that uh, that I was going to bring up too because I've still been having a a fantastic time playing this game. It's yep. They've done a lot to what update level the are game. You? Level uh, are you? Twenty three. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, not go. too bad, not too bad. <laughs> Shut up, Dave. <laughs> I think, I think uh, earlier I just went to level 40. Oh, what? Get yeah, out of here. Yeah. Oh, I saw I'm, de- I'm definitely not telling you what fucking level I am. Some guy, yeah, not some guy no, no, some guy posted <laughs> earlier in um, the Friday the 13th the Game Forum on Facebook. He's level 109. Yeah, I've seen that. Did you see that? I was yeah, like, I was how like, long has this guy been playing? Because yeah. I well, usually It's not, it's not just that. It's like, why aren't you at work or school? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I've dedicated usually two hours a night hmm. to playing this game. And if it's not me, it's Anthony, right? So there's at least two hours being played. We've been playing it since it came out. Hmm. And we're only now level 40. How many hours this man spend to get to 109. It's, uh, Inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, exactly. That's, good. That's a good question. I mean, I'm not getting bored of the gameplay by any means. I'm thoroughly still enjoying it. Yeah. But I'm to the point right now where, and there's a lot of other people it's that are talking stuff. about it this way too. Stuff. Yeah, we new want stuff. new stuff. But I mean, I'm to the point now where I'm not necessarily struggling to find the fuse in the fuse box and, and get the car going. I'm doing stupid shit now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a baseball bat and waiting for Jason to show up and trying to beat his ass. You're you know, just I'm, doing that now? No, no, no. It's just like, it's, <laughs> I'm starting to do that more now. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. I, I'm not even trying to escape anymore. I'm just trying to see how many times I can knock yeah, yeah. Jason's ass yeah. down. I'm trying, usually, usually what I try to do when I play now is I'm not trying to do any of the objectives unless I come across the propeller or the the gas can or you, you know it. yeah then i go do it or the fuse to call tommy or whatever right but or the cops but i just have more fun trying to how out of this 20 minutes how long can i live for mm-hmm. yeah you know hiding and going and because if i i, I have my loadout that i i want to find which is a a uh, swiss army knife firecrackers and a can of uh the 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 first first aid and if i have all those things with a machete i'm fearless don't care i'm fearless because i know if if he grabs me right in the neck or if he threw a knife or stabbed me or whatever spray and you know with the the firecracker that's my loadout and i'm happy yes i can go hunt jason yeah, that, that's that's pretty much where I am with a lot of that too. Is but I love the pocket knives. My one of my favorite things to do is mess with Jason. I'll like 
I'll find as many pocket knives as I can. And I love getting like two or three pocket knives. And, and I just tease Jason. I'm like running and I run out of stamina. I'm like, Oh no, oh, Jason, please go get don't me. Don't kill me, Jason. And he grabs me. It's like pocket knife <laughs> right to the throat. Right the and you usually hear the guy going, Oh damn it. And I'm like, no, he grabs me again. I'm like, you don't learn. Do you? <laughs> That's I've what got happened two the other more night, of these guys. You. That's what yeah. happened the other night. I grabbed you, and all of a sudden, whack with the pocket knife right in my neck. I'm like, what the? And I'm like, oh no! Well, it sounds like really yeah. fun times you guys are having. I wish I could have joined, but someone bought it on Xbox One. That's exactly. <laughs> but actually, I did have a fun. You know time what? The other Karma's a bitch. Karma's a bitch because yeah. I have had less amount of bullshit to deal with with this game being PS4 than you guys have. So, you know what? Whatever. Have fun playing your little game if it works. Have fun, you dirty buggers. Oh, that's why I'm level 40 and you're, what, 26, you said? Yeah, and Dave is level 2? 23. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I did have fun the other night, though, because me and David got to play another match for the first time together because we had, like, played private matches, like, when it first came out, but then we just haven't had, you know, sync up time to play. But we got into a match the other night, and I was Jason. And... I'm chasing after David and I hit him with a couple of knives remotely and he's struggling. Uh, he's like, you know, you know, stumbling around. And I'm like, David, I'm going to kill you. And we pass by the campsite and I'm like, Dave, just get in the tent. Mm-hmm. He's like, why? I'm like, just get in the tent, Dave. I'm going to kill you anyway. Let me have fun with it. <laughs> so he crawls into one of the tents. I walk up to the tent, take out the sleeping bag and beat him against the tree. <laughs> Isn't that, like, one of the best, most satisfying ways to kill someone in that game? It is, and it's so rare and, and hard to do because at the first, people were like, oh, my God, I'm going to hide in the tent. Little did they know my sense of see you in the tent, right? You yeah, know, the so, glowing so, tent, red. The glowing yeah. tent, right? But, I mean, I could never catch somebody in the tent because by the time that I was finally getting into it and the Xbox glitching and shit, it, it was just nobody was hiding in the tents anymore because they realized how stupid it was hiding in the tents. So I couldn't get this achievement. So the other night when I had David stumbling half dead, and I'm like, Dave, get in the tent. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> he gets in the tent and I kill him. It was great. It was it was very satisfying. And it was brutal. That is brutal, man. That was amazing. It was good. Uh, so I'm a team no, player. It's, it's yeah, he's I'm a team player. player. He took he took one for the team. Took I it took for one. the team. Took it yep. for the team. Yep. Oh man. Just remember payback's a bitch. Karma. Karma. Karma's a yep. bitch. Payback's a bitch. It's all a bitch. <laughs> God. So let me see what else is going on. What else is going on? Uh, Tim mentioned some of the projects that we're working on. I uh, had a chance to finally, after several years, finish a first draft of a script that I've been working on that we're going to use for an upcoming project. No, so shush, shush, shush. That's I'm it. I'm not saying That's anything it. else. Anything else? If you it's, say it's anything else, super out of the project. Super yeah, it could, it, could project. Work. it could work. It could work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I know. Yeah, it, yeah, can, yeah. it can work. But it's uh, it was very uh, very fulfilling to finally finish this uh, this draft and oh. hand it off. And, and you know what? like I yeah. said, like the original draft of it, in my opinion, like the first draft, yeah, it was about sixty percent of what I wanted to use. Right? Yes. When you sent me the new revised second draft of it, yeah, ninety six percent. Like, awesome. literally, yeah. like, I read it, and I was like, holy shit, this is exact. like, I don't even have to write it now. Who wrote this, Dave? <laughs> Dave, who did you get to write this for you? No, it, it is it is absolutely brilliant, and like I said, I it was exactly what I wanted, aside from a couple scenes that I want to add into it. Yeah, yeah. But the bulk of what you did is perfect. You know what I mean? It's exactly, you got the right tone, you got the right, just everything about it is great. Um, but like the, like I said, there was a couple little things that I just wanted in there that I want to add. And then once I'm done my version, and then Mr. 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 Miles, Mr. Adam Miles, who's just a lovely barrel of sunshine about the whole idea of the project, he'll, he'll take a look and see what he can do. <laughs> yeah, I'll see what I can do. You know, not not that we need it. Should, it should work. No, 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 it should be okay, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm excited for it. I'm just, I'm one of those guys. I'm sorry. I'm excited for it, but I'm not going to go until we're actually going. 
Yeah, you know, no. Just, just because I, I, there's so many projects, that. unfortunately, that uh, they just like we have a lot of stuff that we're doing. A lot we do. of stuff. we do, and but that's why I'm really trying to get gung ho about this first project because once we get this done, then we can concentrate and finish another project, and then yes. another project. Adam, you got so many projects on the go. Like, you were not content with the full plate that we had. You, though, like, message me, oh, my God, I just did this. <laughs> oh, yeah, my God, I just did this. Okay, this. But, okay. this. I just did this. And I'm like, okay, but, but, but let me get but, okay. the other project first, right? But let me put the backstory out on this one first. So, I, like some people that I've talked to, I barely dream. Like, uh, well, I mean, you dream, but... You know, there's, there's the, what do you remember? And I must have a goldfish's memory because most nights I don't remember shit about what I've dreamt about. It's just habit. I go to sleep, wake up the next morning. I'm th that's it. But this one night I was very, very, I just, I, I was unsettled. I was unsettled. Drunk. <laughs> Drunk. 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 <laughs> I wish, but I was unsettled and I was dreaming and I was dreaming in chunks and I'd, I'd like, I dream of something and I'd wake up and I'd like get a drink or something like that. And I would go back to bed and it was almost like my dream would continue. And I had this very vivid story play out and characters and visuals and, and, and like whole situational, you know, s things. And, and what was weird was a couple of side projects that I'd been writing which just never became a reality at this point, played into this little world that I dreamt up. And it was almost like it kind of told me these scripts that you were writing, these projects that you were writing were never Our meant shit. to be Our <laughs> shit. shit. They were never meant to be their own thing. They were all meant to come together in some way. Come so, together. Come together. So, I mean, the project that I'm working on, the thing that I wrote and I sent off to David and Tim for kind of some, some discussion about was it is a small series based around a main character and and some some side characters but situations in a series of events so it, it was it was interesting but yeah so that's where I've spent a little bit of time writing on some of that but but yeah. it's just it's funny because like I said we we have a full plate <laughs> but shit and, just keeps getting and, and 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 you're 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 very adamant about you know Let's let's concentrate on this thing, that thing, this thing, and then all of a sudden you're like, "Hey, I had this dream and I wrote this script. What do you think? Let's do it." <laughs> we got too much. Just, just slow it down. Just simmer down, Adam. Simmer down. Simmer down now. But uh, it, it's 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 awesome though, because like I was saying, um, I, I believe in the, the the previous episode that we just did. It's cool being spread out into all these different projects because not one of them is getting old. You know what I mean? And it's 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 a lot of fun to be this busy being creative. Um, because if and when we get all this stuff done, wow, this shit's gonna be amazing. Quite the portfolio of shit to be done. Yeah, that's for sure. But we can do it. We can do it. Absolutely. That's right. Well, gentlemen, I think it's about time that we take a break. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we come back, we're going to have our next episode in our Troll Month, where we are going to talk about the Toxic Avenger Part 4, Citizen Toxie. Why we're going to talk about Part 4? We'll tell because you it's awesome! <laughs> we'll tell you when we come back a little bit more. Greetings from Tromaville. I'm Lloyd Kaufman, president of Troma Entertainment and creator of the Toxic Avenger. You know, folks, when we're not making those great movies like Tromeo and Juliet and Return to Return to Nukemai, a.k.a. Volume 2, the Troma team and I like to kick back and, and, and listen to They Cast from the Coast. They Cast from the Coast is, is really the best entertainment, the best education, and the best emotional liberation that uh, uh, Lloyd Kaufman can p possibly experience. Thank you.
15 years ago, a legend was born, idolized by every man, desired by every woman. He's battled all forms of evil and won every time. And now he's returned to face his greatest enemy, himself. <laughs> Oh my god! It's the Toxic Avenger! Charlottesville's favorite hideous uniform creature of superhuman size and strength! Toxic! You gotta stop. You're yourself. The evil version of you. You've gone power mad. It is so. The evil version of me? Yeah. I never trust a Toxic! Yeah! Heroes don't double amputate police chief! Stay back, everybody! He's armed! And hurl 12 year old children at the brick wall! Yeah. I've assembled the only team capable of bringing him in. All right, Toxie! Freeze right there! Superheroes! Dolphin Man! Mad Cowboy! Sergeant Kabuki Man! NYPD! Master! Bader! I'm not going to die. Not in Jersey. We don't want to kill you, but we will. Well, if that's a toxic Avenger, where's his morbidly obese ward and sidekick, Venice? It's lard ass punk. You're pregnant with two babies. Two babies? From what appears to be two completely different fathers. And that's preposterous! You rule, Dad. Oh, God? Yeah, what do you want? I'm your daddy now. Melvin! What the hell is going on here? There can be only one. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us on the last part of our They Cast from the Coast Troll Month dedication. We are going to talk about the Toxic Avenger Part 4. Citizen, Citizen Toxie! Nice I, like how you, I like how you sunk up with me, though, eventually. <laughs> yeah, eventually. <laughs> oh, somewhat. <laughs> it was there. Good job, guys. Good job. All right. But All right. why are we talking about part four? What happened to part two and part three? Well, we're kind of taking a page out of the book of trauma, and we're just going to apologize for the fact that part two and part three exist, and we're oh, going to oh, go uh, to the actual oh. sequel. Yeah. So, just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up, with certain versions, I don't think that it was actually at the beginning, but with Citizen Toxie, when it opens up, it talks about the events of Part 2 and Part 3, the, the adventures of Melvin Junko, the Toxic Avenger, and his trip to Japan, and then back, and everything else. But they basically say, we're very sorry, that was not the movie that we intended to give you, here's the true sequel. And the story of Citizen Toxie occurs. It's so good. It's oh, so good. I'm excited to talk about it. Well, good, good. Um, so Citizen Toxie takes place when the movie opens up, and it has to do with a one of these infamous gangs that we talked about even in the last episode with the Toxic Avenger Part 1. There's always these out and out, you know that they're the villains, bad guys, kooky setups and makeups and everything else. The Diaper Mafia. Interestingly, <laughs> <laughs> interestingly enough... What Tex uh, Diaper, I think his name is, the, the main Tex guy. Tex Diaper. Tex Diaper is actually played by writer, director, and actor Tran Haga, uh, known for like Dead Girl 
and yeah. and while trauma obviously um the diaper gang breaks into the Tromaville school for the special and decides to start killing people <laughs> for the very and special for the very special decides to start killing people and hold them hostage. And uh, they're basically going to blow up the place. Well, Toxie shows up and things go to hell. People die and the place does in fact explode causing a rift between two alternate universes or alternate realities whereas the toxic avenger is pulled into an alternate world of tromaville called amortville trauma backwards and toxie's equivalent in amortville gets pulled into tromaville noxie the noxic of the noxious avenger Avenger. so we have toxie and noxie the the toxic avenger and the noxious avenger um uh, they switch places, and it basically the, the 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 movie takes place between the two realities, showing them kind of coming to the realization that they've been transported between similar worlds, and 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 kind of going from there. The interesting thing is that this movie was a big point at Trauma, where they started introducing other Trauma characters into the worlds together. So we it's had like a, an extended Trauma universe. It's like the it Trauma really was, the yeah. Trauma <laughs> Avengers. <laughs> bringing everybody together right yeah sergeant kabuki man nypd and uh mad cowboy and yeah. uh and all these characters keep coming together and and you know lard ass which was funny <laughs> this movie is full of everything that you come to expect from trauma it's got blood it's got guts it's got tits and ass and shit and and I literally mean shit. I don't mean it is shit. I mean there's people shitting themselves in this movie very a lot. frequently. <laughs> a lot. That that is actually a point of this movie is that a lot of people shit themselves. It's it's, it's kind of funny that way. Um the movie itself is a very well done movie when you look at it though. Mm. Like when you compare this to the other Toxic Avengers or a lot of other trauma movies that came before it, this movie had a higher production value and you could really see that. They shot it on higher quality equipment. They had better production, you know, credibility with it. They had a lot of people behind the scenes to help make this movie happen. And they brought back a lot of classic trauma actors. Um, I mean, where do I go from here, guys? <laughs> it's, it's a good movie. Tim, talk to us some more, man. This is like I, your favorite of these movies. It is. It is. It is my my favorite Toxie movie. Um, I I just felt that, like you said, they they, it's a classic trauma movie. I mean, even though it was made in two thousand, <clears throat> it had that sensibility that 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 vibe that you just come to expect with a trauma film, and. Like, it did not disappoint. It was literally, like, so much happens in this movie. I mean, it is only in, like, 109 minutes, but it it feels like this is a blockbuster trauma film. And, you, yeah. you know, it, everybody's in it, and it, it, it's funny, and, like, I just, I, I just loved it. I just loved it. I love Noxie. I love Toxie. I love... Uh, uh, Tito. <laughs> Tito's my favorite Love character. Tito. Tito's my favorite uh, character. I, I, I also, I, I thought uh, Toxie's wife, Sarah, was good. Um, she made me laugh a couple times. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I just, I really enjoyed this, this movie because, you know, you don't really need to think about anything. You just, you just watch it and absorb all the the moving images on the screen. Like it's it's great. It's great. I I it's easily it's in my top five trauma movies. Nice. So the, the, a wonderful thing about this movie though is, and, and coming from our love of trauma, is that it is unrelenting, and the movie itself is very unforgiving. This movie hates on everybody equally. This movie makes fun of everything and everyone on a very equal level. It doesn't single anything out. (laughs) This movie has, it makes fun of racists and racism. It makes fun of the way that people view disabilities. It makes fun of gore and horror movies. It makes fun of overly sensitive people. It does everything 
and what does it do it like how does it do it uh very very visually <laughs> for the most part and but that's just that's just trauma writing style there's yeah. you can't go into a trauma movie expecting um them to be nice about things they really do take pot shots at everything and everybody <laughs> and i enjoy that i'm sorry to say it but it's a guilty pleasure with the fact that it's just it's just the writing style and it just they don't give a shit period no. they make what no. they want to make yeah it's an equal opportunity offender equal opportunity offender very good dude. well very said good. well said it really is it really is yep uh yeah I mean, right, right, right it's down, a crazy movie. It really is. Yeah. I mean, right down to my favorite character in the movie. My favorite character in the movie is actually one of the Tromaville special students, Tito. We were just talking about him. But He's, say his full title. <laughs> oh. His character name. Say it. Say it, Adam. You didn't come up with this. This is Troma. You say it. Say it. Well, what, it's, Tito. It's, Tito, the retarded rebel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it written on his leather jacket. Why? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like why? It's trauma. But it because it's trauma. He, he's he's yeah. but he's he's a character that's he's trying to fit in. He's he's shooting up heroin at one point, trying to be be like the normal people. Apparently, is what he's trying to tell to, uh, Toxie. He's shooting up heroin. He's got the leather jacket. He's cursing at everybody. He <laughs> treats people like shit because they've treated him like shit his entire life. But he comes to realizations at the end of the movie that he can be more and he can be something much better. And and mm. it's kind of interesting because it's like he takes he takes high praise from Toxie over this because he becomes kind of like a, a superhero in training himself. And, and it's kind of well, got a bright future to him at this point. It almost, his character almost reminds me of, of Toxie before he was Toxie. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the Melvin character, right? Melvin so, Junko. Yeah. Yeah. So look at, look, look at that. Trying to, you know, full circle, full circle. That's right. You know, maybe, deep maybe thinking, he'll man. deep thinking, maybe, maybe he'll become some sort of a toxic, waste superhero of superhuman strength and power or something Who knows? he doesn't need it because he learned how to be a hero in his own way it's very true it's very that's true. that's the point of him it's very true but he was well acted in my opinion too so this this movie also has the atypical over the top acting which is synonymous with trauma oh. however oh, yeah. it's actually well done yeah like it's it very aware of itself in this way and it isn't just bad acting it's bad acting on purpose and you can tell mm -hmm. that it's almost like they've crafted it to perfection in this case this is this is this is the point this this is where it goes um yeah <laughs> and i love i love the alternate worlds because what we have is we have Toxie and Noxy, we have Sergeant Kabuki Man and his equal, we have the Dolphin Boy and his equal and Mad Cowboy and his equal and they're all evil and good and everything else and it just right down to what they're doing. So you've got Toxie and his superhero friends, and then you've got Noxie and his kind of like a mafia of super villains. <laughs> and yeah. they run a hot dog factory, <laughs> which is how they get rid of their enemies. <laughs> this is this is one for the bins, and they like throw somebody in the hot dog machine, and then that's how they make their money is getting rid of people that way. Ah, it, it's too funny, too funny. Um, the movie has quite a few, uh, very interesting gags in it, right down to the point of some of the characters actually purposely doing things like with the old lady, uh, running her over what happens. The, the evil Sergeant Kabuki man goes out of his way to U-turn in a high speed chase just to hit an old lady that he missed. Didn't get her the first time. I'm going to U-turn and, and he hits this old lady, but it, it's so elaborate because it's a trauma movie that literally the old lady has a crushed head and she's on the side of the street, you know, uh, like shaking <coughs> her nerves are going nuts and she's shitting all over the pavement <laughs> and a lot, a lot. Like <laughs> I said, lot. people shit themselves in this movie quite a bit. And it's not just the, the, uh, the, the diaper mafia, which is even funnier. So, um, so Dave, what did you think of this movie? So Dave, Dave, uh, I thought this movie was redeeming uh, after Ooh. part two and part three. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, I remember as a kid, you know, watching the original Toxic Avenger, you know, like we like we mentioned in the the previous episode, and I was so excited to see the second and the third one. And I mean, it wasn't obviously until years later, actually, when I got this book, everything I need to know about filmmaking, Toxic Avenger, yeah, that book, do 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 do, that I found out that, you know, Lloyd Kaufman had actually filmed enough footage for two movies. His plan was to shoot the one movie, but because of all the footage, you know, the light bulb went on and he said, oh my God, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to split it into two movies. But in doing so, I mean, it was, you know, the story had issues, the movie had issues, the movies had issues. They're certainly not fan favorites. Um, It took them a number of years. So there were... There was 11 years, because I think Part 3 came out in, like, 1989, mm-hmm. when it was actually released on home video, and we didn't get uh, Toxie 4 until 2000. 2000. So 11 years went by before we got a new Toxic Avenger movie. People were probably, well, I mean, by that point in time, they had probably forgotten about the Toxic Avenger, because it had been so long. So it was, it was interesting to see Toxic Avenger 4 come out, <coughs> and interesting to see how they were going to overcome part two and part three, right? And I think that they succeeded, uh, no question, in redeeming themselves and actually producing a movie that was... And, Tim, I would probably agree with you that Toxic Adventure 4 is probably better than the original. The original is classic. Whoa, easy there, Dave, easy. Get 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 a little hyper on us, Dave. <laughs> the, the original was classic, uh, and it'll always be a classic. But it 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 was an okay movie, right? Yeah. I mean, it was okay. Um, Toxic Avenger Four definitely took it to the next level. It introduced all kinds of new characters. Uh, it was certainly funnier than the original one because the original one of course had a much darker tone and theme to it mm-hmm. so it was definitely a lot more sexual a lot more lighthearted, a lot funnier like it just it had a lot more going for it you know what i mean it was more enjoyable i it mean was it's, a it's, it was a trauma movie it was a trauma movie, movie. Yeah. at least at least what trauma had had developed into by that time right yeah. i sat down and watched toxic avenger and it was what I expected to see from a trauma movie. I guess when we watched the original Toxic Avenger, they were still trying to figure out who they were mm. as filmmakers. And yeah. you can see the difference, right? They haven't found uh, their stride yet. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but, yes, Toxic 4, Toxy 4 was definitely more consistent with trauma movies that we had seen over the past couple years because this one came out almost directly after another favorite trauma movie of mine terra firmer oh yes that's a great movie too it is a good movie it is a good movie in in my in my lead up to our trauma month going back and revisiting a lot of uh trauma movies that was definitely Mm -hmm. one of the first that i watched well i mean you've got the book right beside you dave the book is I do kind too. of <laughs> yeah. There you go. Right. <laughs> Terror so is kind infor- of a a, a, so a informative and oh god. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, Terror Firmer is more or less the 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 movie of all I need to know about filmmaking. I learned from the Toxic Avenger. One of the best books ever written. <laughs> yes, if if our audience has not read this book, source it out, buy it. Oh my god, copy, this, read this- it. This is so funny. I've never read a book that actually legitimately made me laugh. I felt like he was solely telling me the story. Yeah. And it was just the jokes. It it, like, And it's written by James Gunn. Like, James Gunn wrote this, you know, with the help of uh, Lloyd Kaufman, you know, feeding him all the information. And, I mean, the footnotes are hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. they're awesome. And the, the editor's notes, no, yes, this is not correct. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so yep. so I think this would be a perfect opportunity in this episode to do some trivia. Okay. Awesome. Good do idea. It. Good idea. Okay, so. Trivia time, Tim. No, trivia, tri- 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 trivia time with the cast from the coast. Trivia time with the cast with the coast. Oh, okay, so. 
My favorite little thing that they always put in trauma movies is the classic stock footage of the car flip. Okay? <laughs> like in my opinion, it's not a true trauma movie unless it has that car flip in it. Mm-hmm. I forgot about the one in Poultry Geist when they're yes. going, and I was like, yeah, they made it. And then, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's also in this film, and it's one of my favorite things. Uh, I think it was Sergeant Kabuki Man was the first one to use it, I and I think they spent it. so much money on it to do it. We'll just use it in everything, right? So yep. I love that they put it in so many films. But mm-hmm. another one that I like, it's actually a nod to one of my favorite films by David Fincher, Fight Club. In Fight Club, there's a scene with Tyler Durden and um, what was her name? Helena Bonham Carter's character. Yeah, but I can't remember her name. Okay. Anyways, it was a scene with those two, and they just ended up having sex. And in the movie, she originally said, I haven't been fucked like that since grade school. But the original line was, I want to have your abortion. The test audiences did not like that. So, Troma ended up putting that in their film. Mm. Which I an awesome nod, which is an absolute nod. It's not like... You know, they came up with the same line. It was because, yeah. oh well, your 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 movie's too fancy to have this. We'll take it. You know, and yeah. they they put it on. And I I, I liked it because it just when I heard it, I was like, yeah, cut Fight Club dialogue. <laughs> so, oh man, now that's Go crazy. Ahead, uh, um, this movie, I mean, this movie has a lot more celebrities in it too. So I mean, not necessarily total trivia, but but Ron Jeremy plays you know the mayor. And one of the characters that a lot of people don't actually recognize, uh, Kinky Finkelstein, the doctor, her gynecologist, is actually Corey Feldman. Yeah. And and a lot of people don't I'll recognize do- him because he's got the really? mustache and shit, right? Oh, yeah, no, people don't recognize him. But, Are you kidding me? I immediately knew it was Corey Feldman. <laughs> but the best part about it is, is that his assistant is entirely naked for this scene. Yeah. And she agreed to do the scene entirely naked so that she could have one line of dialogue in the movie. It's all she wanted. She just wanted to be able to say something in a toxic Avenger movie. And she t- told Lloyd Coffin she'd do the entire scene naked just for that. And it was just, it was just hilarious. It was just hilarious. Oh man. And you have, you know, references to things like the guys, I gotta, I gotta pause. Sorry. I'll edit this. Wow. Yeah. Sorry guys. Just a second. Erica. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> You even say that. All right, um, so I'm I'm recording again now. So uh, going back to that. So I mean, the, the movie also has, you know, referencing and and you know stuff to like you know the um, uh, the friggin' the the Playboy Mansion type of character you know scenarios that that the uh, that Ron Jeremy was you know obviously where he's the mayor where he lived and stuff like this. Yeah. The movie itself just has a lot of real life references. But one thing, one thing that was very interesting about that too, is that when it comes to places and stuff that's being referenced, the September 11th attacks occurred a month before the movie was released and trauma in honor of the world trade centers kept the visual footage of the trade centers in the background in the movie. And apparently at the premiere of the movie, they, they received a standing ovation for keeping it in there because a lot of other movies we're cutting mm-hmm. scenes because it was just it was a sensitive sensitive thing, you know what I mean to do. But no, they got they got they got a standing ovation for it, which was good. Uh, that is awesome. Um, yeah. cool. Did you know that in the hospital scene, thirty gallons of blood were used. Thirty, 30 gallons. Thirty gallons of blood, and it doesn't even say fake blood. It says thirty gallons of blood were used in that scene. That, that creeps me out a bit. Yeah. Um, also, also, <laughs> I found this interesting that Dave Maddy, who actually played Toxie in this, is the, the, the tallest actor to portray Toxie at 6 foot 10. This guy's oh. a monster. Holy crap. Yeah, 6'10". Wow. 6'10". Holy and he's gosh. a big dude. Like, I mean, he's, he's you know, somewhat he in shape. A, and, he was a big dude, yeah, yeah that's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> well, it was interesting though too because the the original guy who played the toxic Toxic Avenger in the first movie also makes a cameo in this one. Yeah. But in this one here, <laughs> there was a special scene where basically he gets lynched by the KKK. Yeah. <laughs> because he's the, like fresh out of like an explosion. He's got like soot on his face. And this guy basically hands him off to the KKK. He's here, boys. And they lynch him. And it's just like a weird situation. But he's a big guy, too. Yeah. <laughs> and it shows them lifting him up and getting him ready. Oh, man. Um, One of my favorite cameos. Now, there there was a bunch in this. But one of my favorite cameos was a Blemmy from Motorhead. <laughs> Yes. Because I'm like, yes, Lemmy! Lemmy gets trauma movies! Well, I love he, it! Didn't he have technically two cameos in this? Because he was like almost two yeah. different characters, right? It was one yeah, from yeah. Tromaville and Amorville, right? Yeah. But yeah, Lemmy. I love well, he's Lemmy been in well. other other trauma films, too, because he's been, a prou- he's been a proud supporter of Lloyd and, and Troma for, well, he was a proud supporter of Lloyd and Troma for a long time, so, yeah. He's a very unmistakable person. When you Absolutely. see him. Absolutely. <laughs> as soon as you hear him speak, like his voice is, um, he's a very memorable individual, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, interestingly enough as well, too, uh, director and friend of Adam Green, another director, Joe Lynch, was actually mm-hmm. working at Troma at the time that production began. Um, he had lost his job just before the movie went into production. And uh, he suggested at the time that the front man for Guar, Dave Brocky, was to play Toxie. He wanted him to play Toxie. And, I mean, Joe Lynch and Adam Green and all these guys are huge Guar fanatics, right? You know, Odorous and Dave Brocky mm-hmm. and them. Um, and everybody was on board with it, uh, but Brocky was unfortunately on probation and was unable to leave his home state to actually shoot. Guar was Oops. not... <laughs> yeah, Guar was not uh, road tripping at the time. Let's just put it that way. Guar was not uh, touring. <laughs> yeah, they were not on tour that year. <laughs> they were not on tour that year. Okay, so I got a really cool little film technique that they did, um, which I thought was awesome, and I'm going to have to read it because it's a lot, but I remember actually reading about this in some other article before of even though they're 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 looked upon as being very low budget trauma films um they're very creative with their special effects and some of them are actually really really well done so for the school explosion no destruction to the building or cg was used because of the film's low budget so what they did was they took a photograph of the building and as it was simply taken and then lined it up with an original building made of trick, like a trick miniature. Yeah. Mm. And an explosive was then placed inside the miniature. The camera started filming and the explosive was lit, causing a fireball of flames through the cutout windows of the miniature, giving the appearance of an explosion. And, uh, some of the frames that were actually used in the final film, and they did the same technique with Poultry Ghost. I like it. So it's just it's just interesting, like because I remember watching that, and I was like, okay, well, I don't know how they did it, but it's still effective, right? Yeah. So, so it was basically a fake little house with a picture on the front of it, and they yeah. put an explosion, uh, put an explosive in it that would fireball out through the windows in the openings. Yeah, I yeah. like it. Yeah, and I mean, I almost want to go back and watch it again just so I can see it. Just to try to pick up on something. Like, oh, there's the edge of the photo or something. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Oh, man. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Um, Classic movie, though. Um, So, reality being, I mean, do you have anything else you want to say about the movie, Dave? I'm good. I mean, uh, it's it's Toxie. Uh, you know, ultimately, I would like to see the next movie. I would like to see Lloyd film a Toxie 5, Toxie Twins. Um, maybe we'll get it one of these days. I don't know. But Well, he, yeah, did, he I mean, did tell us in the interview that he wants to film it. They got a script ready to go. But they've got they, a script. They, they yeah. need to film it, and he wants to film it in <gasps> Chernobyl. Go figure. <laughs> I don't know how he'd be able to pull that off, but he wants to do it. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's Lloyd Kaufman. He'll pull it off. So, Tim, anything else? I've I have said I love this movie. 
too. I love this movie. It's one of my favorite trauma movies. It is my favorite Toxic Avenger movie. It's it's in my top five. It's part of my get acquainted with trauma. Yeah. You know, pack. Bucket, you know, bucket. Like, you you want to watch trauma? These are the movies you need to watch. These are the important ones. This is one of those important ones because in this movie, like we said earlier. It, it, it to people that don't know other trauma films, you get Sergeant Kabuki Man, you get you know a bunch of other characters that are by their own right their own movies, right? Yeah. And you get them all in this film, and you get a really good sense. If you like Toxic Avenger, Citizen Toxie, you're gonna love Trauma. Absolutely. It's just, it, it's as simple as that. Like if you like this movie, then you're gonna like a lot of the other movies that Trauma has in their library. So. People just need to check out Troma anyway. Yeah. Support, support, support. And we'll go from there. So, Well, gentlemen, that's it for this episode. The last episode that we have for They Cast from the Coast, episode 28, for the Troll Month. We'll probably plan to do another Troll Month you know, sometime in the near future. But we got some other stuff that we want to talk about. So stay tuned for a Red Band review coming out, though. We got a Red Band yes. review coming out very soon, which is on... Poultrygeist. Poultrygeist. It was the great. night of the chicken dead, which I love. So yes, that's another. Episode. That's another good. I mean, there's so much trauma that we can only fit so much in in the in a, in a single time frame. So we had to break it up into different things. So a couple of episodes of they cast an episode or two of the red band and no, no just a, just an episode, just an episode. There you go. <laughs> Tim had a full plate. <laughs> Tim had a full plate, but we managed to get one done. So we did. We did. So it's all good. So until next time, everybody, Dave. Good night. Tim. Stay spooky! (laughs) And we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in this week to They Cast from the Coast. We hope you enjoyed the topic and the discussion that we've had tonight. We're very excited about everything that's being produced right now in conjunction with the Misunderstood Art Company. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, say hi in the comments section, And just in general, check out the other content that's being offered, once again, under the Misunderstood Art Company. If you want to listen just to the audio portion of this show itself, we're making it available on iTunes, Google Play, and TuneIn on top of the YouTube channel itself. So thank you very much again for your continued support. Check out the rest of the Misunderstood Art Company's offerings. You might even see some familiar faces. And until next time, take it easy.